Are you having a hard time loving the people in your life? Well, as Christians, we are supposed to love because Christ loved us. And also love is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So in today's video, we will be talking about how to love one another. So stay tuned. Hello everyone, I'm Dominique Amara from Ordinary Doing Extraordinary Ministries and today we'll be beginning a new series about the different fruit of the Spirit. So one of those fruit that we're going to be talking about in today's video is love. Now this whole series is going to be based on Galatians uh, 5 cha chapter 5 verses 22 through 23 so I'm going to read that really quickly. Um, the scripture says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So we're going to be talking about all of those things, but particularly in this video, we'll be talking about love. So what does the fruit of the Spirit even mean? Well, the fruit of the Spirit is essentially the result of the Holy Spirit in a Christian's life. So the Holy Spirit changes us and makes us more like Christ. And with those changes come experience such, experiences such as love, joy, peace, self-control, and uh, all the other ones that were mentioned in Galatians 5. Now, what is love according to the Bible? There is a difference between biblical love and worldly love. So according to the Bible, we see in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, um, and I'm actually going to read that. This is the biblical definition of love. So love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love is not boastful. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not irritable and does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Uh, love bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So that in itself is just a great definition of what love is biblically. Now there is a difference between worldly love and biblical love. We see that in the world, you know, people say, well, you shouldn't love someone who doesn't love you back. Or um, if someone does something that hurts you, you shouldn't love that person. But the Bible talks about loving unconditionally, and that is exactly what Jesus did. He loved us unconditionally. Um, Jesus dying for us was an example of his love. Um, we see in John 3, 16, it says, For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. So God loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, who was willing to die for us. It takes a lot of love to be willing to die for someone, especially people who didn't treat Jesus right. He could have easily said, no, I'm not dying for, for them. Look how they treat me. But that is not what Jesus did. So worldly love is is conditional right and there's another scripture i wanted to bring up first john 4 9 through 11 which says god's love was revealed among us in this way god sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him love consists in this not that we loved god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins dear friends if god loved us in this way we also must love one another. And so that is a, a bit different from what the world teaches us. Um, and so there is that, that difference between worldly love and biblical love. But we are going to be, of course, focusing on biblical love and how to love one another as Jesus commands us. Now, one of the uh, most amazing examples of love was, of course, as I mentioned, Jesus dying for us. But not only that, there were some, some moments in, in his death that really showed his love for us. While he was being crucified, Jesus interceded on behalf of his enemies. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Can you imagine being in that situation where you are um, being spit on 
and all they are mocking you and yet you are interceding for them and saying forgive them father for they know not what they do that is a huge example of love right there and it's something that many of us cannot say that we would even do for people who treat us bad for our enemies um so we must love despite hurt it is extremely hard to do <laughs> you may not want to do this and you know you may want people to get what you feel that they deserve but when you start going down those lines of thinking um always remember god did not give us what we deserve so for that reason in itself we must not want a uh, destruction to happen to people we shouldn't want people to get what they deserve because God, as I said, he did not give us what we deserve. Being open to love means that you're going to experience disappointments. I mean, that is inevitable. When you open yourself up to loving others, you're going to experience disappointments. Um, people will let you down and they may even reject you just like they rejected Jesus, but we still must love unconditionally. Now, one last very important point that I wanted to make is that love does not just accept any and everything. Just because you love someone doesn't mean that you also love their sin. Now, we're going to read 1 Corinthians 13, 6, and that says, Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. So, I see a trend here where the world wants us to just say, I'm going to love this person and just act like what they're doing is not wrong and that their sins don't exist. But if you love someone, if you truly love someone, you should be concerned about the path that they are headed in, right? I mean, you be concerned about them engaging in acts that are leading them down the wrong path. Well, at least you should. Um, for an example, uh, let's just say a mother finds out that her son is involved in gangs. Now, that mother is going to intervene, or she should, and um, she's going to be concerned about what he's doing. And that's the same thing when it comes to loving others, um, you know, and not just accepting what it is that they're just doing in their lives. If you love someone, you should be concerned about their spiritual health as well. Not just like their physical health and all of that, but also their spiritual health. You'd be concerned about them engaging in acts that are leading them down the wrong path. Society says that we should just love everyone and everything and just be tolerant, right? Tolerant is like that the big word that has been going around lately. But the Bible clearly states that love finds no joy in unrighteousness and instead rejoices in the truth. So you have to say something. If you see someone going down the wrong path, they're involved in sin. Let's say they're, you know, getting drunk every weekend and just beginning to abuse someone. I mean, whatever it is, there are a list, a whole list of sins that we engage in, right? If I had a friend that truly loved me, I would really hope that that person would intervene. And so that's what biblical love is. We are to intervene when we see someone going down the wrong path. So love is not just happy, happy, joy, joy, birds flying, oh, happy day. I mean, when you really get down in the trenches of love, it can really hurt. And just imagine when Jesus was dying on the cross, I'm pretty sure in that moment he wasn't happy. He wasn't like, this is, I love being crucified. He did not say that. He was hurting physically and I'm very sure emotionally as well. But he continued to go through with it because he loved us. So we can have that same biblical love for everyone and be honest with them, be patient with them, and be kind. So no matter our different beliefs, um, our political differences, or our cultural differences, we can still love everyone. So love is difficult, but it is absolutely necessary in the life of a believer. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it has 
has led you in the right direction in learning how to love one another. If you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and share with anyone you think uh, who needs to hear this message. Thank you so much for watching.